tiny animal. So I don't want to discuss it. I only want to thank you for putting an end to that ghastly meeting. I get so angry. I totally humiliated myself. Oh, really? It wasn't that bad. I've always wanted to tell McNally to go fuck himself. I mean, I'm trying to help them, and they sit there laughing at me. And McNally, that great, big, sweaty, huge, smelly, fat, red-faced baboon, sits there snickering at me. Oh, Christ, and if he doesn't stop going on about N'Gol and his regiment and his rifle, I'll... I can't let them upset me. You did make rather a dramatic sort of exit. And that was a hell of a speech you gave. Oh, don't flatter me. You liked it? <laughs> totally off the top of my head, just said what came to mind, really. I think it's about time someone said those things. You were right about all of it. Pulling together, and the future, and cleaning the floors was all very true. But you did go on for half an hour about plaster work. Did I? I know it's boring, but nobody does anything about it except me. And I'm doing it all is the problem. Do you know there are bats? A herd of bats living in the mango trees attacking the boys of the junior school? The eucalyptus grove has termites the size of land rovers scurrying about. And have you seen the swimming pool lately? It's like a bloody science experiment. Boys go in and have to send a team to find them. We had a monkey come out of the mangrove at cricket practice last week and swipe a ball. The only one we had. And Fox blamed me. I mean, God knows why he's still here. The man's meant to be in bed, but he keeps patrolling about like some sort of military zombie. So Fox proceeds to tell me the story why the British lost the Battle of Illandwana because they didn't have hammers or something. I don't know. Couldn't open the ammo boxes. Nails rusting in the humidity. They all died. I have no idea what it had to do with monkey swiping cricket balls, but still. It's mad. They're all <laughs> bloody mad. I'm in charge of fingernail inspections. That's right. They stick out their green rubby little digits in front of my eyes and wave them in front of my face. <laughs> well, that's nothing, because let me tell you, first bloody thing this morning, I get a note from Neville. <clears throat> uh, Jonathan, in strolling past the junior school toilets, I was assailed by the most unimaginable stench. Please investigate. Well, Best, Nev. <laughs> get out your scoop here, love. <laughs> God, give me a drink, will you? <laughs> so I go down there, right, and it's like the seventh circle of hell. The man is absolutely bloody on target. There's water everywhere. Sort of brown, unfortunately, with little bits of offal floating towards the showers. All of which are sending out huge, great primeval mists of steam. I stood there, hypnotized. The windows have a gruel-like film over them, and instead of toilet paper, instead of toilet paper, there are tiny little shreds of newspaper all over the stalls, <laughs> like a hamster's cage. <laughs> I swear, the bowel movements of the very young are a total mystery to me. No one goes in there to clean? What about Malcolm and Montgomery? Ah, well, uh, it seems that neither of them have set foot in there since Fox took ill. Ah, uh, had to fire them both. Not the great pleasure it's cracked up to be, but uh, not the horror either. Jonathan, it's all changing, eh? Mm. You know something? My dad, horrid as he was, was easily able to delegate authority. Seems I'm going to have to be a bit rough with those pricks in the staff room for a bit. Ah, getting into the spirit of the new Blenheim, are we? I just want them to behave well, be helpful, less selfish. I never dreamt this job was one huge campaign. Tell me, how does one think, Nan, when thinking has not been necessary? And if you can tell me, when has it not been necessary, love? They're all watching me. The way I see it, first I do away with the bats and the termites and the mildew. Then we can try and do away with the damn parents committee. And finally, McNally. Let's drink to that, shall we? Hmm. Mm. You know, I meant to ask you, did I see you shooting at lizards this morning? <laughs> no. No, just, just trying to scare them, really. <laughs> they, uh, you know, lizards, boys see them, go mad, can't get them back in the classroom. I've had to postpone Film Society three times in a row. So typical. I said to Neville at lunch, the problem with the world is that nobody has any imagination anymore. And he thought and said yes, a blessing, really. <laughs> Nobody that is except you. Uh, tell me, do you remember when we all used to go sailing? Wasn't that nice? You hated sailing. Did not. Please, it was always Tara who did all the work. You were too busy being ill or whining about the waves and capsizing. Yes, but you enjoyed sailing, didn't you? Mm. Actually, yes. Jonathan, why 
are we talking about sailing? They've been on for the past two months about wanting me to take on sailing. But we don't have sailing. Ah, I'm to help with the Durban Yacht Club Junior Races. But what for? Mm. Neville seems to think that if a team of Blennies won, we'd attract a new sort. Nautical boys, you know. I mean, absurd. That is not the way to get boys. I don't know. Makes sense from a PR standpoint. Could be prestigious. Typical. But why you, of all people? Well, Neville seemed to recall that the three of us had that dingy thingy, and uh, I was hoping you might take it on, as I haven't a clue. <laughs> Quite impossible, and you know it. I have too much to do as it is, and I'm not... I have classes from Terry's classes and Fox's classes. Uh, I understand, love, but you'd look awfully good to the parents committee if you took on the damn yachting. I mean, they're not very keen on you still. Honestly, do you think I give a damn about that? It's lovely on the bay in December. I have too much to do as it is, and I'm not going to take time away from Terry. And you've stopped calling him. That's not fair. He doesn't want to talk to me. You know I've tried. Look, I didn't want to tell you this, but we're having a bad time. We've no money left. We were like some sort of package here, two for one. My wages alone were sinking. I had no idea. They want us out of the flat. We haven't paid the rent. All our accounts at the shops are shut down. Last week, he charged <coughs> 300 rand at the bookshop. Bought dictionaries to pass out to the school where Bezeo taught. Sat there, weeping, passing out books. So really, yachting? Fuck it. Man. You should have said something to me earlier, because this is one area where I can help with no problem at all. He went out to see his parents in Zululand. They wouldn't talk to him. What are you doing? I'm writing you a check for 5,000 Rand. No, no, stop it. I don't want it alone. Don't argue with me. It makes no difference to me. I mean... I want a raise. <laughs> a raise? Nan, there's no money for plastering, love, let alone raises. Look, just take the check for Christ's sakes. I have this money. My father left it sitting about in boxes. I can't. You see, we really are leaving. I can't. Leaving? What do you mean? You're not leaving. There is nothing here. They've decided. Uh, just, just take the check and we'll see how you all feel in a few months. I can't. Look, we're leaving. I'm not going to take 5,000 rand from you and bugger off. I want to save something up over six months, and if Blenheim paid me what I deserved, we might be able to. It's... I tried leaving, didn't I? When I went to London, I, I never told you. I took all stupid, idiotic Lux radio theatre tapes. It's some stupid idea of getting a job at radio drama at the BBC. Insane. Simply insane. And I ended up, you know where? The bloody isolation ward of some hospital in Chelsea with spinal meningitis. Tapes just lay next to me on the bed. Well, if we stay here, Terry will end up worse off than that. It's, it's ancient, ghastly, packy doctors with shaking hands. That's leaving. It's spinal taps missing the spine. That's leaving. It's a hospital room with wood soap and a clock. Please, Jonathan, try not to take this as abandoning you. Overseas is vastly overrated. You'll be alone and you'll be despised. Let me tell you, I know it. You won't know what to do, and no one will help you. Well, my husband seems to be asphyxiating, and nobody here is helping him. Well, you just be sure when you're on some fucking pub in fucking Earl's Court, when they ask you, tell them you're from fucking Sydney. Damn it, no! I'll be alone. I'll have no one. Please. Jonathan. We, m we must, all of us, try and, and build something as best we can. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> all right. I shall get you an extra 250 a week starting today, all right? Jonathan, can you do that? Because that would be literally saving our lives. Providing, of course, you were to take on the yachting. <clears throat> starting tomorrow. Pardon me? What is this, Jonathan? 
It's a condition, Nan. A condition. <clears throat> well, still have Faber pencils and blotting paper to order. Lots of work still. Oh, look. There goes the cricket team. Aren't they just super? Super.